video tutorial is going to show you how to do binding on a bag. Quite often when I do my video tutorials, I choose to do the birthing method just because I find that there is a few more steps in the birthing method and sometimes there's a few extra little steps that you need to do in order to birth the bag. For example, not sewing all the way to the edges, things like that so that you can birth the bag. Binding seems to be a little bit more almost straightforward, not so many steps, but I did want to have a tutorial because like I said, in my video tutorials, I often do the binding. And while I walk you through and tell you how to do the binding, I do do the birthing method. And I just wanted to have a little extra tutorial to show you how to do binding so that if you do make one of the bags and use one of the video tutorials that I film, you can come back and refer to this video for how to do binding. So of course the first thing you need are your pieces and you will have a constructed lining and a constructed exterior. For my exterior I drew a little circle, a little happy face and a check mark and then my lining just has a happy face and that's the right side. Then I have the wrong sides. For your binding, you will choose which type of binding you will use. Some people prefer fold over elastic, so you can use a fold over elastic. Some people prefer to use this pre-made binding, and this pre-made binding is 5 eighths of an inch wide. Again, whatever width you're comfortable with, go ahead and use that. It'll also depend on your seam allowance that's given in the bag as well, because you want to make sure that this will cover the seam allowance, so you'll need to make it wide enough to cover your seam allowance or there is making your own binding. And to make your own binding, you need to have it the correct length that's given in the pattern. So you'll wanna to refer to the pattern for what the length of the binding is. And then you'll make it to the width that you prefer. So for this tutorial, I'm making my finished binding, so finished being when it's folded, 5 eighths of an inch wide. And that tends to be the one that I use the most. It's the one that I bought pre-made. And in the pre-made ones, if you look, it's kind of made a little bit different than the ones I make where the raw edges don't quite meet right in the center and that's okay because it's still binding where the one I make so I cut it and it's the same way I make my straps so I cut a piece so this is 5 8 I did 5 8 times 4 and that gave me the width I fold it in half and press along the long edges and then I take the open it back up take the long edges fold them into the center and press that and then I fold it again and that hides all those raw edges. It's the same thing as we do when we make a handle or a strap. Then what I do is I open it back up and I take the one short edge and I fold it in. And this can be by a half inch or a quarter of an inch. I like to use a half inch. It just gives me a little bit of extra space. And then I refold this all back up and then that hides one of the raw edges. And you only need to have one raw edge. And another thing, when I make my binding, I, if the pattern calls for it to say B, you need a 10 inch long binding. And I know that's not gonna ever be the length because it has to go around an entire bag, but say it said 10 inches. I like to cut it a couple of inches longer, so say 12 inches, just so that I have that extra space just in case. I know we will trim it off, but I like having it just in case. So we're going to show you how to do this with my pre-made binding. However, if you're using fold over elastic, it's going to be the same method or the pre-bought, pre-made binding. Again, it'll be the same thing when you fold it over the edges. It's the same thing, same method for sewing, except for with the fold over elastic, you're cutting it shorter because it does stretch. So you wanna cut it a little bit shorter and then you'll be stretching it as you go. I just prefer to use my own pre-made binding when I make my binding. So. When you have your exterior and linings completed, we need to take them and place them so they are wrong sides together. So this is the wrong side of my lining and this is the wrong right side of my exterior. So you see both the right sides when they're together. Clip them in place and then you'll base stitch all the way around. And usually the designer gives a seam allowance to you, so you'll want to refer to whatever pattern you're using this for, for what that seam allowance will be. And I'm just using some scraps of foam to show this because I just thought it was really important to show how to make this. Like I said, a lot of patterns and a lot of tutorials that I do have binding and I just do the birthing method so I thought it would be nice to have a video tutorial for how to do binding. So when you're binding, now just to stop and say something. When I started, I had started quilting and I learned to do the binding where you take it, you fold it so that it is one piece in half and then you clip it and again my short raw edge is still folded by half an inch 
and I fold it like that and I go all the way around, all the way around. I will stitch pin it in place all the way around. And then what happens is I then stitch that using the seam allowance that's given in the pattern to go all the way around. And when I get back to where that folded edge is, so when I start sewing, I don't start sewing right, I gotta get this open, it's not cooperating now, it's been pressed really well. I don't start sewing right at the end there because that's the folded edge and we need to be able to tuck the end of this binding into this folded edge. So I start sewing about two inches away from the folded edge. Then once I get it pinned and in place, I can tuck this, again, it won't open up for me. I can tuck this raw edge into, so I open up the binding like this. So there's my binding. I open it up. So now I'm seeing the wrong side or inside the wrong side of the binding. And I tuck this binding, this raw edge will be tucked into where that binding is. Then I tuck it in, making sure this edge here where I pressed under stays pressed under. Tuck the raw edge in, and because this is a bit longer, it's making it hard to do. It's moving around. So tuck the raw edge into that binding. Just like that. So you'll see I have the raw edge. So this is the raw edge going into that binding. I will tuck it into the binding so that I have no raw edges showing. It is tucked into the binding here. And then I'll just sew all the way around. And once I've done that, then you flip it over and you stitch this side down. And it's just the way you did binding when you do a quilt. However, with bag making, it's a little bit different. You can also do that method. Whatever method you're comfortable with, go ahead and do it for the binding. There's really no right or wrong way as long as you get the binding done. And binding really isn't that scary at all. I know some people it's their first time doing binding. I promise you, once you do it a few times, it really does get easier. It it really is an easy method and it kind of adds like a structure or skeleton, I guess you could call it, to your bag where it gives that bit of extra stru structure in the seams, especially if you're making something like a backpack or a circle bag. It's really nice for a circle bag because it helps add that structure and push out those edges where the circles are so that you get more of a rounded look on your bag. So the way we're going to do this is your edge where you fold it under. Start with that edge and clip it in place. You can also use double-sided tape here so you can place double-sided tape all the way around and use double-sided tape to hold this in place. However, same thing as I mentioned with doing the binding the other way. Start the double-sided tape two inches away from the edge because you do want to tuck that raw edge under. So while you're, while you're pinning, you're pinning all the way around. You're pinning this all the way around. Just make sure you can kind of feel if it's going to be even on both sides. And you'll know because the seam here will be right in the middle of that binding. So I'm just pinning it all the way around. And yes, my binding is longer and that's okay because when we get to the other end, we're going to tuck it in, but we're going to trim it first. So I'm just pinning it all the way around. And now I'm starting to come back to where we started pinning with the binding. So I'm going to remove the first clip and I'm going to see where my binding goes and I'm going to trim it. So I'm going to trim it, you know, about an inch, inch and a half over from this end, so an inch to an inch and a half over. Again, you're imagining that this is a lot bigger of a piece. I'm going to remove the second clip. So now I have both loose ends. One end has a folded edge, one end is raw. So I'm going to take the one with the raw edge and I'm going to lay it flat down, just like that. So this is the raw edge. Now I'm going to take the binding edge that has the folded edge, so that there's no raw edges showing, the short edge is folded, and I'm going to place this making sure I line up those seams on both sides, just like that. So when I was placing it down, I was making sure these bottom seams here all line up. You don't wanna see any raw edges. So just like that. And if you're worried about raw edges, something you can do is take this raw edge and fold it so you get a triangle, like that. 
So you get a little triangle. I don't know if you can see that. It makes it like a point. And then that'll make sure that that raw edge will not be seen at all. And using double-sided tape really does help hold everything in place because it feels like you, you often need extra hands to do this, or at least I feel that way. So if you do have double-sided tape, it is your best friend for this. So again, lining up these edges, the long edges of the bindings. Just like that. So the raw ed the long ed finished edges are all lined up and you see no raw edges at all. So now what we're going to do is stitch this all the way around. And you'll stitch this using the seam allowance the designer also gives in the pattern. And you can be doing your binding or doing what I'm doing, what I just did there as you're sewing as well. Again, make sure you start and stop at least two inches away. And I know this isn't going to be the prettiest, but it's just for this tutorial, so I just really wanted to show how to do this. I wanted it to be a quick tutorial, something you can refer to. Yours will be a lot nicer, I promise. It's always a lot nicer than this. And keep in mind, if your binding's not super perfect or anything, it is inside the bag. Nobody ever really looks inside the bag to look at your binding. So once you stitch, so you start stitching, you go all the way around and you come back and you back stitch. And that's how it looks. You've made binding just like that. Now again, I said mine didn't look as pretty because I wasn't super concerned. I just really wanted to make this for the tutorial, but you have your exterior and your lining and you will see no raw edges whatsoever because your binding is finished by being folded and your lining is right and exteriors are right in here. And it's the same thing if you used fold over elastic, you would do the same method and you can even fold this end under as well so you have no raw edges on your fold over elastic. You'll pin it all the way around, all the way around and then once you get it pinned all the way around, you'll then sew it all the way around. And when I use fold over elastic, I do use double-sided tape because I do find this tends to slip a bit on me. So I always use double-sided tape for fold over elastic, but with, as you saw with the binding, I don't often, sometimes I don't use double-sided tape. I guess it just depends on how much double-sided tape I have. Pre-made binding is really handy because you don't have to worry about cutting it. It comes in lengths of three yards. This one I buy at Walmart comes in lengths of three yards. I don't trim it, I just do what I did there, so I always have a longer piece of binding, and then I trim it once I get it back over to the other side as I showed you. So again, you leave that two inch gap open, and then when you approach that side, you put your binding into, you tuck the raw edge into the binding, and then you fold it over, and you have no raw edges, because one edge is going to be turned under like this, and fold it in so you're not going to have any raw edges at all showing when you do your binding. So I hope this little tutorial was helpful in showing you how to do binding and if you have any questions or any comments go ahead and put them in the description below. I do tend to come back and check my comments every so often. I don't, I, I, I don't get email notifications all the time so sometimes I don't see when they are and I come back and I check and I'll reply to them as soon as I can. But I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and you won't be so scared to do binding if you were afraid or maybe you'll give some binding a try and you can do what I did. Cut out some scraps of foam you know, practice your binding on some scraps. That way there you get really good at doing your binding and you will feel more comfortable when you go to do it on a bag. So if you practice, practice makes perfect. Go ahead and use this tutorial. And if you do use this tutorial and you post any photos on Instagram, use the hashtags below to tag me so that I can see that you use the binding method that I showed you how to here. And again, you have lots of options for different kinds of binding to use. I just like making my own because I can make it to match either the lining of my bag or the exterior of my bag. And the other thing too is if you're worried about your stitching showing, as you noticed here, I used a brown thread that matched the brown um, fabric. 
but you can use whatever color thread that will match and then you won't see it. So if this here is white, you can use a white thread. If it was black, you can use a black thread and then your stitching doesn't show as much and then it doesn't matter if you're a little bit wobbly as you're stitching around. So again, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're going to give binding a try. Thanks for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.